Uh, Hebrews chapter 7 and look at verse 25. Hebrews chapter 7 and look at verse 25. Everybody probably has heard this verse before. Wherefore, he is able to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. Now that verse is saying that God's able to save anybody. If somebody don't get saved or can't get saved, it ain't God's problem or fault. It's theirs. Now the two words, three words that I want you to look at is in the first part of the verse. It said, Wherefore, He is able. He is able. I want to preach tonight on them three words. And I want you to listen to me because this will help you with whatever burden you have, whatever you're going through, this will help you if you'll listen. He is able. Now, I will say a few things tonight. That verse says he's able. It did not say now he can do this, but probably not that. It didn't. Say, it just left it open. He is able. God is able. Whatever you need in your life tonight, God is able. I talked to a man the other day, going through some struggles. You know what I tell him? God is able. The Lord is able. You listen to me tonight, teenagers? The Lord is able to help you do right. Mamas and daddies, husbands and wives, the Lord is able to help you all get along with each other. Teenagers, the Lord is able to help you live right when school starts. Uh, you're here, the, the lady's talking a minute ago about uh, the problem with alcohol. The Lord, God, is able. I'm telling you tonight, He is able. He's able, people. He's able. A little song said, He's able, He's able. Amen. But my God is able tonight. He's able to do whatever we can believe Him for and trust Him for. I want to say, first of all, tonight, He is able to save them to the uttermost. It matters not how deep they've gone in sin. You know what Paul said one time? The Apostle Paul. He said, I am the chief of sinners. I'm telling you, brother, if Paul was the chief, that means uh, he, the Lord can save all of us Indians. Amen? If Paul, he was the chief of sinners. Sometimes I felt like that. But Paul was chief of sinners. He was a blasphemer. He was a, an evil man. He was a self-righteous Pharisee. I mean, you'd think there was no hope for. But God met him on the road to Damascus, turned him around, saved him, and he used him to write oh, half the New Testament. He's able to save to the uttermost. I know some of you have a brother. You have a sister. You say, Brother Danny, my brother's so far gone, I don't think there's no hope for him. I'll tell you something. God's able to get a hold of your brother. You say, Brother Danny, my daughter is out there in sin. I don't think there's no... Don't say that. I'm telling you, you know who we're talking about tonight? We're talking about the one who's able. He's able. There was probably people thought I probably would have never got saved. There was probably thought Brother Jason never got saved. You heard his testimony the other night. Brother Jimmy, listen. Hey, if he can get a hold of him, me, he can get a hold of your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister. He's able. Sometimes the devil will make you think, no, not them. They're, they're atheists, and they're this, and they're drunk, and they're a drug addict. It don't matter. It don't matter. God's got a monkey wrench that'll fit any nut in this country. And I'm telling you tonight, ladies and gentlemen, he's able. Hallelujah. He's able. He's able. He's able. He's able. Old Billy Bray was an old coal miner in 1830s in, over in England. Worked in the coal mine. Wicked, vile, crazy man. And you know what? He went to church. Or they got somebody witness to him, and he got saved. And Billy Bray wound up being uh, one of the shoutingest men uh, that's ever been. I think he was one they said he'd go down the road, and he said every time one of his foot hit, he'd say, Glory to God, thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord, thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord, every time his foot. I've tried that before. I've tried that when I was running. I'd say, Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know if that's vain repetition or not, uh, but I was trying. And I was saying, Lord, bless the youth rally. Lord, bless this. You know what? Old Billy Bray got saved. Listen, when I got, when I was in high school, if you'd have lined up every boy in my graduating class and said, which one of them you think is going to be a preacher? I guarantee you I'd have been in the bottom three. 
or two. I mean, I, would, I never thought about being a preacher. And here I am tonight, by the grace of God, I'm telling you, He's able to save to the uttermost. Don't you give up on your family. Don't you give up on that brother of yours. Don't you give up on that lost cousin or that sister. Don't give up. I'm telling you, God's able to change circumstances. He's able to give them a dream in the middle of the night. He's able to change circumstances. Listen, I knew a man one time who laughed at the Bible, who cussed me, who, who, who cussed the church, and you, you'd have honestly thought, he's good as in hell with the door shut. And that man wound up getting cancer, and God got a hold of his heart, and he got saved before he left this world. Now, I hate it had to go like that, but he wound up in heaven, and I'm telling you, God is able to save to the uttermost. He's able. He's able. Sometimes we have family members that we think are impossible, but not with God. With God, all things are possible. Ladies and gentlemen, let me encourage you tonight. Don't you give up on your mom or dad. He is able. Hallelujah. Number two, let me say secondly tonight, he's able to transform lives. He's able to transform lives. I've heard people say, well, my son's saved, but he's all messed up. Now, I'm telling you, God's able to change life. I had a friend of mine up in Marion many years ago named Jerry Delaney. And old Jerry was a drug addict. He was a drug addict. He was in on the hippie, uh, the hippie movement of the, the early 70s. And old Jerry, I mean, he was out of his mind. I mean, they'd take back then, they called it different stuff, but it's, it's more potent now and strong and everything. Uh, all that THC and all that uh, smoke pot and, and got drunk. And old Jerry, it almost fried his brain. And you know what? Old Jerry, come to revival that I got saved in. That's what revival is. Revival ain't just a bunch of Christians getting excited. Lost people start getting saved like crazy when, real, when revival hits like that. And Jerry got saved. And immediately, Jerry's life changed. He went, got him a Bible. He went and got him a haircut. Poor old boy, he didn't hardly have no money. Lived down there on Spring Street in Marion. And old Jerry, he, 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 he got an old Bible and he devoured that thing. He read chapter after chapter. Sometimes I, I, told, I talked to him one day. I said, he said, I've been reading my Bible, Danny. I, he said, I've read half the New Testament this week. And I said, Amen, brother. And you go uptown, you could go uptown any day. That's back when all the stores was in town in Marion. They didn't have shopping centers, Walmart and all that. And, uh, and you'd see Jerry, he'd have somebody up against the wall and have his Bible just to do it like this. Preaching. He was the best soul winner. He was the absolute best soul winner uh, beside Brandon Freeze's mom or one of them uh, that I've ever seen in my life. I'm telling you, that boy talk a blind man into sin. He did not give up. He, he He'd get that Bible and he'd preach to them every service, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. He'd come in with some old thug, I mean, and bring them, and he'd hit the altar with them. Now, I'm telling you, you know who'd done that? God Almighty had to do that. My pastor, Hall Hollifield, he said, I never seen nobody change like that boy changed. And I'm telling you tonight, Jerry nearly had lost his mind. He had nearly burnt his brain out. And God restored his brain. And God restored his mind. Some of you sitting right here tonight, the devil will tell you once in a while, you can't remember Scripture. You smoked too much dope. Or you did this. You burnt your brain. You tell, you rebuke the devil and tell him to leave you alone. Listen, the Bible said God will restore your mind. You're renewed in your mind. He's able to make a Bible scholar out of you. He can transform lives. He can change you. Glory to God, brother. I've seen them go from the gutter, brother, to the choir loft. I've seen them go from selling drugs out there to preaching in the pulpit. I've seen them, hell's angels get saved, go around the country giving their testimony. And sometimes we forget, brother. He's able, he's able, he's able, he's able, he's able, he's able. He's able to transform lives. Number three, let me say this. Listen to me, young people. He's able to keep us from failure. The Bible said in the book of Jude, verse 24, who is him, unto him that is able to keep you from falling. I know young people that say, Brother Danny, I'm scared to death to go back to school. There's so much wickedness there. I, it's just so awful. Let me tell you tonight what the book says. It said, He is able to keep you from falling. 
I told the other night about my cousin, Sam Bellini. Many of y'all know uh, Sam. Sam is my first cousin. His mom, Shirley, my mom were sisters, or still sisters. Mom's done gone to heaven, and my Aunt Shirley right now is the closest thing I've got uh, to, to remember my mom by. And uh, she's been like a second mother to me. And Sam and Dan... Twin, her twin boys uh, were in school and they were popular and played basketball and everything. And uh, the first re big revival we had in Marion, we had two big ones, one in 1986 and the other one in 1994. Uh, the first one over yonder in Bryson City at youth camp uh, in 1986, Sam and Dan got right. And Sam... Young man, still in high school, he, he dedicated his life to God. And a lot of people said, ah, oh, them young people, they get fired up at camp, then they go to school and backslid, uh, backslide, and Sam made up his mind he wasn't going to do it. And he walked in McDowell High School up there and carried a Bible every single day. I think 11th and 12th grade in a public school. They laughed at him. They made fun of him. I mean, and brother, he didn't hide it underneath of all these other books in his desk. He put it right there on his desk and Sam read that Bible and you know what God did? God looked down and said, I'm able to keep you from falling. And brother, uh, he went and Sam stayed right with God and Sam kept right and right now tonight, he's a preaching right now over yonder in Hidden Out while I'm preaching here to a, a big church and got a big ministry and a bus ministry and preaching revivals all over the country. You know why I'm telling you young people tonight? He's able to keep you from falling. If you want to be kept, if you'll get right with God, if you'll say, Lord, keep me, He is able to keep you from falling. The devil will throw everything at you like he did Job. You know what Jesus, uh, the devil did to Peter one time? And the Lord looked at Peter. I've always thought about this scripture. It's unusual. And, and the Lord looked at Peter and he said, Satan hath this the desire to have you that he might sift you like wheat. He said, the devil wants to ruin you, but I have prayed for thee. Isn't that a blessing? I thought, reckon the Lord's prayed for me. I hope he has. I sort of believe he has. I believe there's a time or two when the devil said, I'll sift Danny as wheat. And Jesus said, help him, Father. Help him down there. He ain't nothing. He can't do it. And I'm telling you, the Lord helped me through battles and struggles and burdens that I could have never, ever made it through by myself. He is able. He's able, people. He's able to keep you if you want to be kept. You want to live right, you can live right. You may not be perfect, but He's able to keep you. Number four, He's able to fill you with joy, if you really want it. First Peter chapter 1 and verse 8, Having not seen, ye love, in whom though now ye see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Hallelujah. You don't seek joy. You don't say, man, I'd like to get in there and have a shouting service. No, you don't seek joy. You don't worship shouting. You don't worship worship. You worship Jesus. You worship the Lord. Some churches get off on that. They say, my goodness, nobody shouted tonight. It wasn't no good. Well, ain't nobody shouted. It ain't no good. You don't worship shouting. Shouting ain't God. You worship the Lord. I'm telling you, if you worship the Lord a little while, it won't be long somebody be shouting. Somebody be saying amen. Somebody be praising the Lord. If you don't believe it, if you don't believe it, hey, some of you sitting right here tonight, if you just let go and let God have his way and just surrender all and get in that altar tonight and throw up your hand and say, dear Lord, you can have everything I've got. I give you everything. Lord, Lord, there ain't no telling what God might do right here tonight. He's able, He's able to fill your heart with joy. You don't, you don't, you don't try to, you don't worship joy. You worship the Lord. Then He fills your heart with joy. Ladies and gentlemen, He is able. You say, preacher, I've lost my joy. Just get back right with God. Serve God. Do right. He's able to give it back to you. Number five, He's able to keep His promises. He's able to keep His promises. The many, many examples in the Bible. The classic example of God keeping His promise is Abraham. God called Abraham an heir of the child deed. You know what God said to Abraham? He told Abraham said one day, He said, Abraham, you believe me? He said, I sure do. He said, look up yonder. What do you see? 
All them stars. He, can you count them stars? And Abraham said, Good no, Lord, no, I know I can't. I can't count them in the millions. He said, That's how many kids I'm going to give you. And Abraham said, What? I don't even have no kids. That's how many I'm going to give you. He said, How many stars up there? I have no idea. Well, that's how many. You can't count them. People ain't going to be able to count your kids. Well, as you know, Abraham was getting up in years. As a matter of fact, up in his 80s. And Sarah was nine years younger than him. So if, if Abraham was 85, Sarah was 76. Still no kids. And you know the story. I ain't got time to take a long, long time. But they started doubting the Lord. The Lord promised Abraham. And I bet they thought, you know, God said that, but I'm, I'm starting to wonder. You reckon he really did? Listen, if God promises you something, you take the bank, buddy. You take it to the bank. You can stand on it when there ain't nothing to stand on. You can raise your hand. I mean, you can, you can, you can just believe. If God tells you something, he'll do it. And so Sarah started doubting a little bit. She said, honey, uh, I ain't been reading my Bible a lot because I've been doubting a little bit, so I've been watching TV every morning. And I saw on, uh, I saw on uh, uh, Dr. Field, they had one of them women on there with them surrogate, had one of them surrogate moms. He said, what is that? She said, it's a woman that comes in and, and sort of, you know, substitutes for the wife, and then they have a baby. And uh, he said, what are you talking about? Sarah, you're backslid. I can't believe you. She said, no, no, you've got to listen to me. My maid, Hagar, can come in here. After all, we know God promised us, but we're supposed to do our part, right? Don't, ain't, don't that tell, ain't that what that preacher on the radio said? We should do our part. And he said, I don't know. And she kept on and on and on. She said, hey, God, I don't know how to talk to her. He, she said, she'll come in. You have a baby with her. And when the baby's born, it'll be just like it's ours. She'll, she'll give it to me, and he'll say, you don't think maybe there might be a little jealousy? I mean, don't that woman's nature kick in there? She, no, 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 no. She'll give it up. She won't have. And he said, you know, uh, my preacher said if, if two people sleep together like that, they're going to have feelings for each other. And she said, no, 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 no. It's total, uh, uh, what do you call that, mm, uh, monogamous? Uh, I mean, it's total whatever, uh, surrogate, and she's going to have a baby for us. And, and one thing led to another, to another, to another, to another. And when he's 86, 86 years old, Hagar had the baby and named it Ishmael. And that still wasn't the fulfillment of God's promise. God said, I'll give you a son, you and Sarah. They didn't think that baby was ever going to come. But God said it back yonder. I ain't got time to get into it. But Ishmael was born. Ishmael was the father of the Muslims. All the people in Iraq, Iran, Saudi Arabia, they have the oil. They're causing the trouble in the world. I see they are the terrorists. And the promises of God do not belong to Islam. I mean, there's all kinds of books and Farrakhan and all them false prophets get on there and say, we are Abraham's children, and they are. They are half Abraham and half Hagar the Egyptian. They're a mixed breed that God said, I will make them a great nation. They got a lot of money. But the promises of God were through Isaac. It's Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph through Israel and the Israel who owns that land over there, the Palestinian-Israeli conflict, God made the promise to the Jews, not those Egyptian Jews called Muslims. I'll get you in trouble, but it's truth. Long story short, he called Abraham and said, you're going to have a son. Sarah shall have a child. This time, Ishmael's 13, the number of rebellion. And Sarah walks in one day and says, <laughs> You ain't going to believe this. He said, What, honey? He's 99. She said, I'm pregnant. And he said, You'll see now. She said, No, I ain't. I'm having a baby. 90 years old. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Woo! Ninety, 90 
years old. Glory to God. It may take a while, brother, but when God says she's coming, she's coming. And Sarah did have a child and named him Isaac. And the Bible said, He that was born after the flesh, Ishmael, persecuted him that was born after the spirit, Ishmael. And it's still going on tonight. But I'm telling you tonight, He is able to keep His promises. You know what John Wesley told him one time? And there, I said, John Wesley, there's a lot of people trying to kill you. And he said, I'm immortal till my work is done. I believe that. I don't believe you can't, you can't kill somebody until God gets through with them. Number six, he's able to use us in his service. He's able to use us in his service. Let me tell all you that go on bus route, all you that knock on doors, all you that witness at work or wherever, grocery store, all you that give out tracts. We got a bunch of chick tracts. Thank the Lord for Mrs. Harris. Out there, send them to us. We still got some of them left. You take them things and put them out of here. Put them out of here. Get them what? He's able to use you. It is the greatest blessing in the world to feel like God's used you. You've, every once in a while, you ever just felt like, man, I believe the Lord used me. Man, that's a blessing. Lord, there ain't nothing like it. Like she's talking about them kids, that grandma with all them kids, and you see people come in like like Deanna here, all, the product of the bus ministry many years ago, and then come back to church just recently, and people like that, and people like these kids in here tonight, Molly and Ethan, and all y'all being here tonight. You know what? It just it it's just a bless. Sometimes I look at our church and I think how God blessed us and everything, and we didn't do this. He, it just it's a blessing to think. He used. I told you one night on Wednesday night. This happened to me not long ago. Uh, when I'm not playing ball a lot, I, I go to the gym. On, most preachers take Monday off, go play golf. So what I've been doing, I've been go, I go to the gym and run. I run every day, but I go to the gym and run hard on Monday mornings. I plan on going tomorrow morning to the Lord's will. And I run hard. And it's hot in there. And I, I shoot 100 free throws and run a couple miles and then, then an hour and a half or so. And then I, uh, I go to the bank, go go take care of business, pay bills, get my week started off right. And I've been going early. been going early sometimes at 6 o'clock in the morning. And that's good for you, man. You get up and run 6 o'clock in the morning, you'll feel good. It's awful at first, but you feel good the rest of the day. Well, anyway, I was over there one day, and I was shooting like that, and there's two or three kids on the other end. And I'd shoot 100 free throws. I'd do 50 and run a mile, and then do 50 and then run another mile a lot of times. And I just bang, 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 bang. And I can some usually hit... Between 89 and 95, I have 100. And ain't nobody in the NBA can do that. Except Stephen. But I ain't got 10,000 people screaming in my face either. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I can't do it like that. But anyway, this little boy come over. He's about 14. And I said, how you doing, buddy? And they come over and I played ball with these boys the other day. I told Kelly it embarrassed me. It embarrassed me. I was playing, I was playing ball with these boys 16, 17. One of them plays for Freedom High School. And man, one of them done the crossover and faked me, and I went like that and fell, and they laughed at me. That hurt my feelings, man. I said, these boys laughed at me. And something said, well, you idiot, what are you doing out here playing with 17-year-olds? You should be their grandpa. <laughs> but anyway, that did hurt my feelings. But I, I'll get them tomorrow if they're there. But I'm just kidding. If you can't beat them one way, I'll beat them another way. I'll trip them. No, I just, and this boy come up and I was shooting free throws and he said, how'd you learn how to shoot like that? And I said, practice. That's the only way you're going to learn how to do anything is do it, anything. And I thought, there's my door right there. And God opened the door and I started witnessing to that young man and I said, did you go to church yesterday? He said, no. I said, sit down here. Me and him sat down on the bench and the whole gym cleared out and I led him to the Lord sitting right there on that bench. And he prayed. I said, did Jesus, I forget his name. I said, did you ask the Lord to save you? He said, yeah. And I said, now you go tell your mama. He said, I ain't never been saved. And I got to leave him to the Lord right there. You know what? It's a blessing to think the Lord can use you like that. He'll use you. You know, I wish about every one of y'all in here this, morning, this evening would say, you know what? Brother Danny, I've got a hunger. I want God to use me. I want to lead somebody to the Lord. I like, well, there's somebody out there you can get. Somebody out there you can get. He'll use you. Well, I tell people all the time, Jesus loves you, Jesus loves you, and on an average of once a week, 
somebody will say, I needed that. Thank you. I'm having a hard time. Pray for me. How would you know? See, God will use you if you'll let him. Number seven, I'm done. He's able to raise us from the dead. John 6, 39 said, That hour is coming which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice. You know what that means? We have the promise that we ain't going to stay dead. And we got an example. He called Lazarus. He said, Lazarus, get up. There's an example to show us that he can do it and that he will do it. Everything God does, there's an example. You want a picture of the rapture? Enoch. You want a picture of the tribulation? Egypt. Lot, they, Lot the, uh, the destroying of Sodom. All of that stuff's in the Old Testament in typology. You want a picture of the resurrection? Lazarus. And Jesus looked and he said, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead come out of that tomb, brother, grave clothes and all. And they said, loose him and let him go. I'm telling you tonight, we've got the promises, ladies and gentlemen. We, 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 we laid uh, Miss Azalee out there in the grave the other day, Thursday. And I know Miss Lorene's heart was breaking and their family's heart was breaking. And they just laid that body around. But I'm telling you, I've got the promise right there, sister. I've got the promise right there that all that are in the grave shall hear the voice of the Son of God she's coming out of there the old song says ain't no grave gonna hold my body down I believe that brother we're coming up we're coming up my mama's body's coming out of the grave my daddy's body's coming out of the grave my sister's body's coming out of the grave Jesus is gonna bring their souls with him their body's coming back and reassembled and meet their soul in the air they'll get their new body we get our new body and so shall we ever be with the Lord we got the promise He's able to raise us from the dead. Now I want to ask you a question tonight, and I'm through. Well, Jason, if y'all would, I know I, it's on you. I want that song. That song this morning touched my heart. Maybe y'all could come do a verse of that. I want to tell you something tonight. He's able to help you with your addiction, your problem, drugs, alcohol. Hey, kids, look at me. You've been looking at trash on your phone that you shouldn't be looking at. He's able to help you with that. You just say, Lord, by your grace, I'm not going to do it no more. And kick yourself. And say, by your grace, I quit. He's able. He's able to help you. You don't have to live in filth. He's able to give you victory. If you're here tonight and you're not even saved, he's able to save you. If you're here tonight and you're saved but you're struggling, he's able to help you. Let's stand. They're going to sing tonight. Let's get in this altar. Let's pray for our loved ones. Let's pray for our families, our brothers and sisters. Amen. I'm telling you tonight, He is able. He's able to help you with whatever you're going through. Maybe you had to get rid of some old sorry boyfriend or girlfriend. He's able to take them feelings away and give you the victory. He's able. He's able to do that, you know. Go ahead. Amen. Come on. Come on. Let's pray, y'all. Come on. Let's pray. Come on. Let's get in this altar. I wish that I could pull the curtain back again. A bunch of you ladies pray for this girl over here. She needs, she needs help. Be good if a bunch of y'all ladies just get around her and pray. She needs help. She needs deliverance. That demon of alcohol. Amen. That's good, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. 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 Yes. You just say, here I am. Here I am, Lord. Use me. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. 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 Use my feet. All I have is yours complete. Let my life be a reflection of your grace. Amen. Just say, Lord, here I am. Use me. Here I am. Use me, Lord. Use me, Lord. Use me, Lord. Go ahead, folks. Go ahead. Y'all pray. I wish I could 
God help her, Lord. God help her. God help her right now, Lord. God help her right now, Lord. I pray you do a miracle in this girl's heart, Lord. Jesus, touch her, Lord. Jesus, touch her, Lord Jesus. Oh, God, please. Oh, God, please, Lord. Please, Lord, do a miracle in her heart. God, please. Deliver her from that demon of alcohol. Help her to get rid of it, Lord. Help her to get rid of it. Amen. Help her to get rid of it, Lord. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Hey, y'all believe the Lord can deliver her? That The alcohol got a hold of her. I believe God's able, don't you? I believe God's able to deliver her right here tonight. Anybody else? Anybody else need prayer? Come on. If you need prayer for something, you come on. Come on, we'll pray for you. Yeah, man, we'll pray for you. Anybody else? Yeah, man. Amen. Thank God. Hallelujah. Hit man. Amen. The pendulum slowing down. Amen. Lord, I want to live for you until the trumpet sounds. Hallelujah. He's able. He's able. Yes. Let me love, let me live, let me give myself away. Hit man, y'all. Use my hands, Hit man. use my feet, all I have is yours Hit man. complete. Let my life be a Hit reflection Hit man. of your grace. Yeah. Need to come? Be a good idea. Be a good idea. Glory to God. Y'all believe the Lord can deliver her? I do. Yeah. 